Well, welcome to Simpler Living PEI. This is my channel. My name is Tammy, if you haven't been here before, and we just share the little things that we do on Prince Edward Island just to, you know, make our simpler life for ourselves, which the more I think about it, it doesn't really seem much simpler, <laughs> but compared to what we used to do, it's actually quite a bit. But thought I would show you what we have done today. Now it's mostly a uh, human food and a bird food kind of day. So go ahead, check out what I did today and uh, tell me what you think. So we are starting our human food with some nice breakfast sandwiches. So what I did instead of actually frying individual eggs is I made a sheet pan omelet. Now, if you've ever made a sheet pan omelet, they're wonderful. If you haven't, they are a great way to feed a crowd as well. But all I did is I took some of that yellow pepper from our first grocery shop, some leftover ham, and of course some onion because I like my onion. And of course I'm going crazy on the eggs because I shouldn't. With the cost of eggs, I probably shouldn't. But we sauteed the veggies and the ham, beat the eggs with a little bit of milk, and of course you know I gotta have my cheese. You gotta have the cheese. So we mixed it all up, and a really, really handy trick for doing all this is wet your parchment paper before you put it in your small baking tray. Hugs all the corners, it bakes up wonderfully, you don't have to worry about it, and that pan is the easiest thing in the world to clean. Now when I cut them up I did cut it up a little bit weird because the buns are a little bit smaller that I ended up using and don't worry all those ends they're not going to go to waste. Now these are those half price whole wheat rolls that we bought and yeah you know I'm adding more cheese but what I'm going to do with these when I do cook them is they're going to go into my little griddle pan so they'll have the weight on the top and all the you know cast iron on the bottom crispy tasty cheesy gooey <laughs> yeah okay yeah you know I like my cheese now we're wrapping them the same way we do the burritos they're gonna get wrapped up individually it's gonna keep them from getting frosty you don't want the frosty on the bread because then the bread gets all hard on one side and mushy on the other and I don't know if anybody else is the same as I am but I really 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 dislike soft mushy bread <laughs> now the last little bits I kind of made some cheater wraps I suppose out of them. All I really did is add some cheese and I was deciding whether I was going to make a quesadilla there in case you're wondering and I changed my mind. They ended up just going in a bag. They went they're going to go in the freezer with everything else and I'll just put them in the same griddle pan. Quickie little breakfast. Now the other thing that we made today was apple pie filling because I kind of wanted a, a crumble and we got those apples now they're Macintosh apples and normally yeah when you make apple pie you peel the apples but if you've ever made an apple pie with a Macintosh it gets really 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 soft so I keep the skins on and it gives me that bite when I eat them and the apple pie filling it's in all recipes I seem to be going to them a lot but they have flavors that I like and recipes that are easy to follow. I do modify them a little bit to be absolutely honest with you because you're really only supposed to put cinnamon and nutmeg in this and I put a little bit of cloves. Now it calls for a half a cup of cornstarch because it gets cooked and it thickens and trust me you just get, you really should just try the recipe. But like I said I put in cinnamon, I put in the nutmeg and I added cloves because I like cloves in my apples. I think it tastes really really good. I also only did half the recipe. This recipe called for 18 cups of apples. I only did nine. I had to add some more because apparently I don't know how to read the side of my massive measuring cup. <laughs> anyway, so you cook it all up, you bring it to a boil and pop the apples in, let it cook for about 10 minutes and then that's it. It is the easiest apple pie filling around. Now there's a great apple pie filling that you could also can, but you can't use regular cornstarch for that. But we're going to talk about that probably in apple season because I want to jar up some apple pie. Now once it cooled a bit, I put some in our little crumble dish. The rest of that is going to go into two plastic containers and it's going to go into the freezer. 
apple pie, apple crumble, whatever I want to do it. I can put it on top of pancakes, put it on top of waffles. Who cares? doesn't really matter. Tastes good. Now, the crumble, first of all, I made a full batch of crumble instead of a half batch, so I ended up with way too much crumble. <laughs> so there was a lot of crumble on that little apple crumble when it came out of the oven, but it tasted really, really good. It's just a basic crumble mix, butter, sugar, brown sugar, cinnamon. I add oats to mine though, because I like the extra fiber. And then once I put it on top of the crumble, you'll see it here in a minute. Oh, there's the oatmeal, by the way. I actually put a little bit of demerara sugar on the very top as well, because it gives me that little extra crunch that I like. And then, like I said, the rest of that crumble did go on top because I had nothing to use it for. So that's okay. It came out good, tasted fabulous, perfect recipe. Well, ah, we're at the little grocery store. So we're going to do some food for us and some food for the birds today. My problem is, is to make bird pucks and suets and things, you shouldn't really use vegetable shortening with palm oil and that's the only shortening I have. So we're on the hunt for lard. Suet would be better, but lard is easier. Let's go check out the store. Sometimes there's some fabulous deals. These things make great sandwiches. We also have some wraps on sale for $1.99. Okay, time to go. It is such a beautiful day, I would love to go for a walk. Too much stuff to do today. Cool view of the harbor though. That's heavy. So we're feeding us and we're feeding birds today. Now, I wrote this down just because it was a little easier. There's actually, um, on the Audubon Society, they have a page for um, basically homemade suet. You know, the suet blocks for the birds. Now, the recipe is a shortening recipe. I'm gonna use lard, I'll tell you why. Um, first of all, most shortening has palm oil in it. And when I was reading, palm oil apparently is not so good for the birds because it has a lower melting point or something. I can't remember. I'll link it so you can see. But also the recommendation is actual suet, but that's a little harder to find, but you can also use pure lard. So saw that when I chatted and I told you I needed to go and get some for this. So we're going to make some suet for the birds. Now I already made the donuts and I'm almost out of those donuts. They were made with bacon fat, which is also good. You gotta just make sure you get the little bits and pieces. Now, if you're a vegetarian and you don't like lard and you want to make these, I'm not going to lie, hunt and get the palm oils, they're the non-palm oil shortening, but birds aren't vegetarians, guys. Birds eat bugs. And the lard and the suet gives them that little bit of a protein kind of kick when there's not a lot of bugs out in the middle of winter. You also shouldn't be giving this, and this stuff in the summertime either, so. But anyway, aside from the point, we are going to melt the lard and nut butter, no sugar, no salt, no nothing. This is just pure, straight from the boat barn, ground up peanut butter. Not 100% natural, nothing but peanuts. Okay, the birds, they don't need the salt and they don't need the sugar, okay? Alrighty, let's get this in here and get it melting. While that's melting, we're gonna get the dry ingredients. Now the dry ingredients call for one cup of quick oats and a half cup of cornmeal, and then the bird seed. Seems weird, but 
We're going to do it. The Audubon Society says this is good. We're going to use it. Looks like that's the last of that bag. Let me get some more. All right. I need another half a cup of oats. There we go. And a half a cup of cornmeal. And three and a half cups of bird seed. Now, Audubon Society specifically says wild bird seed, which is the only stuff that we buy. We actually buy the wild bird seed. This has got a little dust on it with the no corn in it. Just because that's just what we like. <laughs> there she goes. I wanted to I wanted to do the food part first so I don't get bird seed on my measuring cup and then in the oats and the cornmeal. <laughs> I don't want bird seed in my cornmeal. I'll link the company we actually buy our bird seed from. Well, we actually buy it wherever has it, like Canadian Tire and things, but it's actually a good thing. It's actually made by Armstrong. It's, it's, it's a nice bird mix. All the birds seem to like it. And the squirrels. And the odd mouse. Alrighty, put this in the sink. There, all mixed up and ready for the peanut butter and the shortening. I'm actually gonna make pucks. So this is actually a silicone muffin pan. And I can put four of these pucks in our cage where the donut is. And I've been trying for three days too to get pictures of the Blue Jays at that cage. Hasn't happened. Alrighty guys. So this is our peanut butter and lard mix. So it is ridiculously easily from here, mix it all together. So that's all it is, see? Kind of hard to see, sorry. All right, I am going to get these into our muffin pan. Gonna use my scoop, it's probably gonna be easier. There we go. Now if I have too much, I can always pull the donut out and fill it up too. Now the lard, as opposed to the bacon fat, the lard is definitely more liquid when you're doing this though. The bacon fat is um, a lot more viscous, I noticed. And the peanut butter, of course, will help fat, you know, sorry. Thicken it up as it cools. I have no idea what I'm trying to what word I'm thinking of right now, which is terrible. I think for this last little bit, I'm gonna put a little bit more bird seed in this, and then I think I know what I'm gonna put it in. Because these containers here are pretty much the perfect size for that cage, and there's just enough left for a big one. All right, so it's a little messy. I almost tripped over bird seed. They're a little messy, but kind of realized now the camera was too low. Sorry, guys. So I'm gonna cool these. 
and our one big one. I'll show you how it worked out. So I'm gonna go pop these in the freezer and I'll be back. So it wasn't a big day. Didn't do a lot of stuff, but we have two containers of apple pie filling to go in the freezer. Smells phenomenal, just so you know. And what was I gonna say? <laughs> I can't remember. Anyway, so these two will go in the freezer. So you can do a straight up apple crisp with them. You can put them in apple pies, whatever you want. Now these apples, like I said, they're Macintosh, so they cook down more. So when I do make a pie, I might add some blueberries. I might, I don't know, could do anything. I might get some more tart and firm apples and just kind of bulk it up. So we also made our crumble. Now this is still warm. Doesn't that look good? Smells good too. I ended up using all of that crumble. I didn't see any reason to waste it. And of course, we fed the birds today. Now these have been in the freezer. So there we go. Our own little homemade suet pucks, so to speak. And yeah, I have still been trying to get pictures of those blue jays at the rest of the donuts, but that's okay. We did actually have a pretty good day. It was a productive day. A little bit of nothing, a little bit of cooking, a little bit of feed the birds. But like I said, I will link the um, Audubon Society that recipe we did for the birds down below. Some really cool information on that site, just so you know. I will also tell you, or see if I can find the link for our bird seed, because that's like a wild bird seed and it's actually done really well for us and it's got no corn in it. Corn can bloat, from what I'm told. And rice is the same thing. Don't feed your birds rice. Kind of like how, you know, you don't throw rice at a wedding anymore. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that's been our day. It's been a quiet, relaxing day. We have some jam making coming up because poor Freddy's down to like two jars of the jam that he could put on his PB&Js. So we have to make Fred some jam. All right, I'm gonna get dinner going, relax a little bit, and I appreciate all of you. Thanks for coming out. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. That's the word that apparently I can't say today. Subscribe button. <laughs> And come along with us as we do our Simpler Life on PEI. 